Intense heat beats down on the plains of southwest Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. Franklin and Oliver live here. These two brothers are 13 and 14 years old. They have 10 brothers and sisters and belong to a family of farmers. It's more than 40 degrees in the sun. This dusty road in the unrelenting heat is a path they know well. Children here play an important role in the domestic daily life. Franklin, being the younger brother, had to get permission from his big brother Oliver to drive the wagon. He's very proud. Tomorrow the two boys will go to school, so today they are in charge of getting water for the entire family from the only well in the region. On the way back, these 20-litre jugs will weigh 20 kilos each once they're filled with water. Getting water in Madagascar is challenging. Only 12% of the rural population has access to drinking water. The well, being the only source of clean water, is where everyone in the region comes together. Two hundred kilograms in the wagon. This time, Oliver takes the reins. In Madagascar, schools are very far. The distance often transforms the trails into veritable obstacle courses. Above all, it's poverty that keeps many families from enrolling their children in school. Their father refuses to accept such a destiny. Franklin and Oliver are fortunate but they must be up to the task, and challenging chores are part of the lessons to be learned. Oliver and Franklin's father is an educated man, an exception to the rule where three quarters of the inhabitants are illiterate. Unfortunately, and with great regret, he had to stop his studies and work in the fields to feed his family. Oliver and his family are strong and resilient. They know hunger and the uncertainty of tomorrow due to the ravaging effects of grasshoppers and the droughts that often spoil the harvests. Succeeding in their studies is the only way to create a better situation. The brothers know this well. Therefore, they work very hard to build a bright future for themselves. Their middle school is a five-hour walk from their home, too far to go back and forth daily. The solution? Their parents have rented a modest six-square-meter shack for them to stay in, close to their school. All week, the two young boys live alone. <laughs> And for Franklin, this is a challenge. <laughs> 
tsara. Franklin is always happy wherever he is, as long as he has a pencil and a piece of paper. Drawing is his passion. Raising Zebu is what finances Oliver and Franklin's studies. 400 euros per year, nearly 10 months' salary in Madagascar, is the cost of their education. In addition, the parents must go without the extra hands in the fields. Many Malagasy of the same age abandon their studies. By persevering, these two young boys have a hand in their destiny. Even if they continue to help with the herds, they will have the freedom to choose a career. Oliver wants to be a doctor, and Franklin wants to be the mayor of the village. Franklin and Oliver must cover a distance of over 20 kilometers on very uncertain roads. One area is particularly dangerous, Malangaj. It is said that organ traffickers position themselves in this area and ambush young Malagasis to kidnap them. Once they've left, their mother has no way of knowing whether or not they've arrived. She must wait the entire week for their return. Even under the crushing heat, the first few kilometers always feel like an adventure, an exciting mixture of responsibility and not having a care in the world. The brothers are lucky to be together. Moving forward no matter what to get closer to school. Time marches on and Franklin can no longer advance. They've been walking for two hours under the scorching sun. Oliver is getting annoyed. Now is not the time to give up. If Franklin keeps walking, Oliver promises him they will take a break as soon as they get to the shade of a tree. Oliver kept his word. He's admittedly very happy to be having a break as well. Mm -hmm. 
augmenter le discrédit sur les efforts inlassables de toute une nation pour sortir d'une crise sans précédent. Ce sont bien sûr les termes de ce communiqué de la présidente Mayer. La population sénégalaise a augmenté depuis 2002. 3 millions d'habitants supplémentaires. Et les Sénégalais sont 13 millions au total. C'est ce qui ressort du quatrième recensement de l'histoire du pays. Il a été mené par l'agence nationale pour les statistiques et de la démographie. Les premiers résultats ont été communiqués hier par une France les États-Unis. On croyait qu'il y avait 14 millions d'habitants au Sénégal. They're here. Malangatra is the most dangerous passage of their entire route. Oliver and Franklin will only advance with the utmost certainty that no outlaws are in the vicinity. Even the trees are menacing. To avoid this dangerous part of their route, there exists a shorter way, but they must cut through the forest. Oliver is not at ease. Halfway through, under an unrelenting sun, they're dreaming about lunch. A few grasshoppers will do. Far from the safety of their home, Oliver feels responsible for his little brother. He protects him and takes care of him, but is very strict when it comes to his schoolwork. He's curious whether he's up to date on his homework. Unfortunately, Franklin admits that he didn't finish his history. Franklin's a dreamer. He would much rather draw than do school. No. They were very lucky to catch the bush taxi. It will take an hour off their long walk. In Madagascar, only about 10% of the roads are paved, but it still remains the best way to get about the island, even at 20 kilometers per hour. It will take Oliver and Franklin four hours instead of five to get to their middle school.
An hour early may have been optimistic. Nothing is less sure now. A wagon has tipped over on the bridge and is blocking the way. This latest setback is putting them behind schedule again. Once they get to their final destination, there will be no time to draw. They must set up the shack, and it's better to do it before nightfall. Betioki is the most important village in the area. Once a week, there is a market. The brothers must cross it from end to end to get to the outlying neighborhood where the little shack is that their parents rented for them. Luckily, they are close to their school. Their parents gave them a bit of money with which to buy the bare necessities. They need food and basic supplies to hold out for an entire week. A bit of petrol for the lamp and some flour is all they could afford this week. Meat is a luxury. They'll have to do without it this time. Totally independent at 13 and 14 years of age, they must look after themselves for an entire week. After five hours under the sun, they still have a lot of work to do. First and foremost, they must have an impeccable uniform for school tomorrow. And they have to review their lessons.
It's 8 p.m. The day was long. Franklin has one obsession, going to bed. Oliver is inflexible. He forces Franklin to pull out his notebooks while he fixes dinner. The next morning at dawn, the boys are already up. The first class begins at 7 a.m. With their school bags on their shoulders, Oliver and Franklin resemble every other child on the way to school. Throughout the world, every morning, thousands of fortunate children take to the road on their quest for knowledge. Their dreams will design the world of tomorrow. Grinding the corn necessary for the Dungyong family's lunch will take two hours. Here in the southwest of Mali, girls learn to mill these grains at a very young age. Oliver is lucky to be a schoolboy. At ten years old, he's the second boy in a family of seven children. His older brother moved to the city years ago. His younger brother is a baby, and he has five sisters, which dispenses him from certain domestic chores. 
Pascaline, the oldest, is the only one able to help with homework. Even with modest means, the family has always prioritized education. Pascaline went to school for nine years, but she had to stop because she wasn't able to get a scholarship. It's now up to Oliver and his two sisters to continue. Their life in the hamlet of Senu is very rudimentary. There is no running water, no electricity, and no roads. Even though they're only a dozen kilometers from Bamako, their bicycles are the best way to get around, and maintenance is an imperative. His parents saved for a long time before being able to buy two used bicycles. Mali is one of the five poorest countries in the world. Minimum wage is around 40 euros a month. As simple farmers, they make even less than minimum wage. But this was an essential purchase. It's the quickest and safest way for them to travel the five kilometers that separate them from their school. It isn't rare in the brush to run into bulls, rabbit dogs or serpents, some extremely venomous. At least on a bicycle, a lot of these encounters can be avoided. Yvette and Michel come from the Dunyon land in the center of Mali. They left in hopes of finding work here, close to the capital. But for the past two years, a war has been raging. The combat is concentrated in the north, but the economy is failing in the entire country. In spite of these difficulties, they have only one objective, to do everything in their power to help their children succeed. The only way to reach this goal is through education. It will increase their chances of finding work in a country where only 29% of young adults know how to read and write. Because he wasn't schooled, Michel understands the importance of an education and is intent on sending his children to school. This choice represents a huge effort for the family because it comes with a cost. Clothing, for example. Uniforms are not mandatory, but students must show up with proper and clean clothing. Yvette has given the local tailor the task of making new clothes for her children. For a small price, Machin Kigui, as he is known in the village, the master of the sewing machine in Bambara, and he's capable of performing miracles. He makes outfits for Marie, Veronique and Oliver, the three students of the family but in no way are they allowed to wear them outside of school. Since his brother left, Oliver is the oldest son in the family, a title he is proud of. Protective but authoritarian, he is in charge, even though Rose, his little five-year-old sister, wants to join in.
The humidity in the air makes the heat very difficult and chores more exhausting. This afternoon, the thermometer is pushing 40 degrees. It's the end of the dry season. The water level is very low. It has evaporated in the past few weeks and is beginning to stagnate. Luckily, in a few days, the rainy season will begin. The well, which is five meters deep, will fill up again. The sound of religious songs rings through the air announcing mass. Every Sunday, Oliver and his family go to the Catholic church in the neighboring village. Mali is primarily a Muslim country. They belong to the Christian minority, which represents only about 5% of the population. The rainy season is beginning. This is the first of the big storms that will soon hit the region. The monsoons are always met with anxiety. It allows the vegetation to grow, but makes getting around very difficult. Tomorrow, the trail will be flooded. The road to school could very well be inaccessible. It's 6.30 in the morning. The sun rises over Bamako. A few last verifications before the older children leave. Joseph, the youngest of the family, will be next to ride the bike to school. But for now, he must content himself with helping to inflate the tires. 
There are only two bicycles for the three children. Marie gets the smallest one. Veronique is in charge of Oliver. As a precaution, their father gives them a bit of money. They get two coins, one for any mishaps along the way and one for sweets. Oliver is proud. His father has entrusted him with the money. He may be the youngest, but he is a boy. The children make do without baggage racks. Oliver is used to sitting on Veronique's handlebars. It's not very comfortable, but it's a lot better than being on foot. At first, the road is well defined. No real danger, but Marie is upset. The bicycles don't hold out very long. They've been fixed too many times. Marie will have to continue without brakes. They still have more than four kilometers to go. rains have soaked the trails. The temptation is too strong. Their father warned them this morning, above all, do not stop along the way. Ride on the side of the road and avoid the puddles. The water is very dirty and you could catch malaria, he said. But how can they resist? Mali is a flat country, no hills to climb, a godsend when traveling by bicycle. But it is very hot, already almost 30 degrees. They've been riding for 20 minutes and everything is going well. They're on time. The best fruits, those with the most sugar, are on the highest branches. Oliver needs no excuses to climb the tree. <laughs> yeah. 
Oliver, Marie and Veronique haven't quite reached the halfway point of their trip. School is still a half hour away and they cannot be late, especially on a Monday morning. Veronique, the oldest, likes to be punctual. Oliver is the most carefree of the bunch. Using a pee-pee break as an excuse, he enjoys taking his sweet time. Until he realizes he's lost the money. The coins must have fallen from his pocket when he climbed the tree. Oliver is worried. They really need that money to repair Marie's brakes. Even though time is getting short, they go back with no assurance of finding these coins. It's back to the starting block for the three siblings. Searching for the money, then stopping to repair the bicycle if they find the coins. So much lost time. They might be late. Veronique cannot get over it. One coin out of the two found. It's half of what their father gave them, but there's no more time to continue their search. They left an hour ago, the time it usually takes for them to get to school. This time it will be much longer. Should they forge a trail in the middle of the herd or take a detour to go around it? The girls are frightened. It's Oliver's chance to be brave. The outskirts of the city can be seen at the end of their trail, but the closer they get to their goal, the harder it is for them to advance. The old bicycle derails too often. They cannot possibly return home in these conditions. They must do something. They must decide between the sweets or the bicycle repair. It can't be both. They only found one coin, so it'll have to be the repair. By stopping at the mechanics, 
Oliver, Marie and Veronique ensure they return home at the end of the school day. Marie, Veronique and Oliver arrive right on time. Their trials and tribulations are already forgotten. It's the beginning of a school day just like any other. Every morning, all over the world, thousands of fortunate children take to the road on their quest for knowledge. Their dreams will design the world of tomorrow. Doctor, I can't. 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 I can't